The materials that you'll need for the caddis variation of the hot amber nymph will be tying are Zappagap, 6 op brown thread, natural ostrich hurl, black flash, medium green ultra wire, ice dub in peacock, 1 8 tungsten beads in black, and the hook we'll be using today is a size 12 Orvis check nymph hook. The instructions of the recipe for this variation are shown here in print. Recipes for the stonefly, mayfly, and other variations of this pattern will be shown at the end of this film if you're interested in tying those. Since the hook is barbless, we don't have to worry about debarbing it. Attach that firmly in your vise with the bead slid onto the hook. Once you have your thread attached roughly about over about half of the hook shank, you can snip off the excess. You take the four black flash tail fibers, making sure the butt ends are sitting just behind the back end of the bead. You want to wrap those down to about level or even with the bottom side of the tungsten bead and simply wrap over the front of the butt ends. For the caddis variation, we'll snip these off at a very short length, eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch, just to give the impression of some little tufts there. Next, to take that green ultra wire and you want to secure it on the far side of the hook shank. As you continue to wrap that downward, you can check your progress to make sure it's adhered laterally. And wrap all the way back to the tie-in point of the tail. Once you have that secured, take one or two wraps forward. And at this point, you'll bring in the one strand of ostrich hurl. Secure that by the tip and return the thread back just behind the bead. Now you could wrap this hand over hand uh, when it comes to the ostrich hurl. Uh, I find that it's a little bit easier and a little bit faster if you have a rotary vise just to hold on to the end of it. Uh, you can see I clamp into it with some hackle pliers here and rotate that vise to help wrap that forward. A little side to side movement to help avoid the vise and the tip of the hook here. And once again, we're not looking for perfection here. Just nice smooth wraps, most of the fibers flaring up and out. And once you get about an eighth of an inch behind the bead, you can secure that, tie it off, and either cut or break off the excess. At this point, we'll begin the wraps with the wire. Now, an extremely important point here, as you begin to wrap the wire forward, it is essential that you wiggle it side to side throughout the motion of wrapping. Now there are going to be fibers that do become trapped underneath the wire. Don't freak out about that. Uh, it's, it's not an exercise of perfection. We just want to assure that some or that a decent proportion of the fibers make their way in between the wraps. This is going to give that nice buggy wiggly movement and a little bit of softness to the pattern once it gets wet. Once you've wrapped that wire forward, you can secure it and helicopter off the excess just behind the bead. At this point here, we're going to create a sparse dubbing loop using the peacock ice dub. I like to put a little bit of uh, the loon swax on the thread just because it helps that peacock uh, fibers secure to it. So once again, we want to be sparse here. It doesn't have to be a, a huge or heavily packed dubbing loop. You just want to allow those fibers, once we spin them into the loop, to be able to wrap on there. We want to allow them a little bit of movement and wiggle. So, sparse on the W loop. Once you have that W loop formed, you're going to take a small drop of Zappagap. And this just helps you really bond down and lock down those fibers. It's a little step that you can take that adds a lot of durability to the fly as you use it. As you start to make those forward wraps, uh, I think it's important to take your fingers and brush those fibers rearward. That way we're getting the maximum, uh, maximum length and wiggle out of those fibers and we're not unnecessarily trapping any of them down there. After you make two or three wraps, you can go ahead and secure the dubbing loop. Snip that off, trim it off. And you're ready to either whip finish or half hitch the fly. Once 
that you've snipped clean your thread, rotate the fly upside down, and for durability's sake, place a small drop of zap cap on the underside of the bead.